What it is, what's up, got your podcast in the cut. If you're a long-time YouTube watcher, which hopefully some of you are, um, you may have heard me do that intro recently, you know, like the last few years, and then you'll hear me say, that's not the right intro. The reason why I always do that is because I had a podcast. I was one of the lame motherfuckers in pandemic era society. I was like, fuck it. I have nothing else to do. I'm going to make a fucking podcast. And I did that. And I did tons of episodes in that podcast. If you want to look it up, which you may not, you may want to. I don't fucking know. But it's called the Telesis T-E-L-E-S-I-S A Societal Podcast. That was honestly some of the most fun I had even like I wasn't doing shit of shit on there. And that was just a very free-flowing podcast. But after a while, I, for whatever reason, I kind of got tired of it. So I moved on, um, tried to do more YouTube stuff and just more general stuff in general. General stuff in general, yeah. Um, so I didn't come back to it for a while. But I got the itch again. It's like crack, bro. Literally, my my last episode was Bullet Train First Impressions <laughs> on 9-11-2022. So... Um, 21 years uh, from the date of a supposed, tra- supposed a tragedy. Uh, another tragedy commenced in which I stopped recording my podcast. But fast forward to now, I could go back to that podcast. I certainly could bring some of the content from there to this channel if anybody wants to hear it. Um, but I just kind of said, fuck it, let's do a new start. So here we are, new podcast. Hopefully, this intro is going to give a good idea of indicating that, but hopefully it's going to be a lot more structured than that one was, because that one was some shit. I I would just come in and do like a 10-minute podcast one day on um, recording a shitty movie like Bullet Train. Another one, I'd do like an 80-minute fucking podcast on like society at large. So... (laughs) Another thing that I'm improving, or at least trying to improve, I'm going to use my Blue Yeti that has just kind of collected dust every other video, um, every episode, and I'm going to use headphones to monitor audio, which is something that I have not done. (laughs) Unfortunately, I've kind of let the audience get the brunt of what that sounds like, but I'm going to actually come through and try to hear this shit out. So... Really, I guess no further ado, um, this is going to be a more structured podcast. I have chapters. I have, hopefully, chapters I can put into YouTube. Um, structure this in a certain way. So, it's going to be entertaining. I'm going to do different things, different uh, relevant topics. Uh, you know, entertainment reviews, hot topics of the day, whatever. I think I generally am pretty entertaining. Um, I definitely love to hear my fucking self talk. I've been scrolling through this fucking podcast, and I have fucking... Uh, just endless episodes. So if you want to hear a motherfucker ramble, I also feel like I have a pretty soothing voice, all things considered. So if you want to get some ASMR shit, hell, if you want me to do ASMR, I'll do ASMR. I don't give a shit. Um, if you want me to do ASMR, just ask me. With no further ado, let's get into the actual content. Okay, so first topic, something that may be a little bit polarizing off the rip, but, you know, I got to stick to my guns here. I got to let you guys know what I'm going to be on. This week in anime. Now, I'm not going to do a weekly anime segment. I just, you can't, you know, I just don't watch enough of it. But this is a very special week. And if you are deep in the weep cesses like me, then you know why. Especially if you're a kind of dusthead like me, like not quite old as fuck, you know, Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon age, but like, you know, you've been on this shit for a minute. That's me. So, I'm going to pull up a tweet. This is from at J. Lee Trey, T R E Y. This week in anime. First bullet point, One Piece live action releases Thursday. Second, Naruto new episode Sunday. That is OG Naruto, as in 
fucking Naruto against Kabuto, uh, the Sound 4, the most maybe overhyped fight in modern anime, Gaara and Rock Lee. It's not overhyped, it's just reposted too much. That Naruto. One Piece chapter 1091 release. I mean, who gives a fuck, right? Um, <laughs> it's not, not a good way to cover One Piece. Jujutsu Kaisen second season Shibuya arc begins tomorrow now or Thursday. The Bleach Thousand Year Blood War arc episode on Saturday. The previous one was beyond hype. Uh, we should have, I I think, um, the Bondcast dude checking one on one. I think he said there's pretty much about two episodes left, give or take, two or three. So we should be entering. Um, I don't want to go into manga spoilers, but we, we're getting to a pretty good point. And last episode was incredible, by the way. Uh, and then finally, Bleach Hell Arc releases in color September 4th. All right. By the way, I think I think I'm think i sick with something, bro. I've been macking out with chicks recently. Um, I think I went to a bar a couple weeks ago. Listen, I'm not going to mention the C word, but, yo, some shit's going around. I think I might have caught it. But if you hear me sound a little bit nasally or fucking kind of fatigued, that's why my fucking throat is literally, like, pausing ahead of time. But my throat is getting the belly of danger right now. Pause. That's why, you know, it's irritating, you know. That's not why. It's, anyway, man, you get the fucking point, man. I said pause, all right. Um, so to talk about the anime here. So One Piece live action. Some people seem to be up for that, bro. I, Me personally, I can't get up for live action. Even though I've seen the trailer for this, it looks fairly realistic. Uh, I don't think they gave Nami, uh, Nami big tits. Um, which, if you watched One Piece, which I watched, I, I don't like One Piece. The, pre the premise of One Piece, I don't like. I can't say I don't like the series, but the premise of it, I don't like. The fans are awful as well. Um, but I will say that I do seven kids, or four kids, and some adult swim. In my life, I can't tell you like what happened, but in my life, I have watched, I think up until... The big blue dude with the long nose shows up. I don't know what arc that is. Um, last year, I think I watched the first arc, which is like kind of fillery. I think the thing is they don't have like they have like a lot of mini arcs that like kind of get thought of as real like arcs. So basically, I think his name is Captain Something. The dude with the the paws with knives in them, or really, I guess more like swords. Um, I watched past him. I didn't get the chopper. I didn't even get the Sanji uh, on my rewatch. I may rewatch it again at some point. I always said it with One Piece, but I never do, obviously. Um, so I'm familiar with like, at least the, the structure of One Piece. I tried the manga. The fucking manga is horrible. I fucking, I don't know how Oda is revered as like a, a mangaka. He's a fantastic story writer, builder, or whatever, but. That's the one thing that Kishimoto and and um, my guy um, oh, uh, Kubo have over him is just like stylistic, like vision. Their league's better, especially uh, Kubo. The problem is that at a certain point, I think you'd rather be able to depict a good story than draw bad narratives. And for my two goats, unfortunately, they both had some spells where. Some shit was put out there, but Oda is Oda, I suppose. Uh, going back to One Piece live action, it looks the best. I think the one has looked in a while. I thought the Cowboy Bebop one looked pretty decent, honestly. Um, I never got to, I never really wanted to watch that one, but I thought it looked good. It fucking captured the vibes. But as I understand, like, um, for one reason or another, kind of didn't really uh, execute in terms of the. Kind of depicting the story. Um, some other ones are just fucking abhorrent. Like the uh, the Death Note one was Americanized, and that was fucking horrible. I heard the Bleach one was pretty decent. I think I watched like maybe ten seconds, thirty seconds of the trailer that they had for that back in the day because that's a pretty old one. Like that, that's got to be from like twenty 
It's between 2014 and 2016 that one came out. It's been a hot ass minute since that one came out. Um, and all the ones I think I mentioned at this point are all Netflix produced, including a One Piece. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that plays out. I've heard good reviews about this, but it's kind of like um, what's the old story? Um, the boy cried wolf. That's kind of what this is at this point. We we'll just have to come and see, but. I think a lot of people who have uh, kind of the next up in terms of anime that could be live actioned are hoping this one works out. I've seen some JoJo fans hoping this works out. Um, I don't think Naruto's ever gotten a really like. I don't think Naruto's gotten an American adaptation at all in terms of live action stuff. So that would obviously probably be next if I'm correct about that. And then some of the next generation, the 2010s anime, they probably be up next too. You know the. Uh, I think they've done an uh, Attack on Titan adaptation. Of somebody's, I think, done one, but not a big budget American one. Um, Jessica Kaisen, Demon Slayer. I mean, those are all up next, obviously. So this One Piece one definitely would need to be good to, I think, make... I don't even know if... Like, when you see Netflix, at this point, I'm not even sure if they make money off of these fucking things. They're just massive projects that seem to just fail... And Netflix, I guess, just writes them off as fucking tax losses, I suppose. Um, Naruto, this is one I care a lot more about. So, OG Naruto, as part of his, um, I believe it's the 20th anniversary of the anime, because the manga, I think, came out in 1989, I want to say. Um, as part of the anime's 20th, 20th anniversary, Kishimoto's done some pretty cool things. Uh, one shots. Um,. They've had some really. I've, I've like gone to thrift shops and seen like some of the content, the merch they've released for the anniversary. I've done the same thing with Bleach, by the way. I actually own a couple of Bleach shirts. Um, so they're doing the whole big shebang. Uh, the, the game, they released uh, a new Naruto Storm, which some people seem to believe is going to be enough different to warrant comping. I'm not sure about that, but we'll see. And then I think that's kind of the biggest thing, obviously, releasing new like completely new anime episodes around certain points of og naruto i believe all four episodes are supposed to be from the part one from naruto uh i could be wrong about that but i think that's the case and that's gonna i think that's well worth it to do this the thing is like the filler the reason why you can watch filler and like still have a good time sometimes is that like filler stays within the universe like, if you really enjoy those characters, you'll want to, like, see them do bullshit. Now, of course, there needs to be a limit on filler. And uh, Naruto got that wrong. Especially Naruto Shippuden. But, um, the world is the world. Like, I thoroughly enjoy the premise of seeing Naruto walk around Konohagakure. Konohagakure. I have to do a fucking uh, Cardi B. Uh, Konoha. And, you know, cut the shit with Aruka. Or see, um... You know, Konohamaru and his uh, his gang, like, just horse around. Or any uh, number of things. I mean, I didn't watch too much Naruto filler after I had the ability to control how I watched it. But as a kid, you know, I saw some of this stuff come on, I'd watch it, man. I mean, Naruto is Naruto. And it's a, really one of the grandest universes created in, enter in entertainment in the last 20 years. Um, in the 2000s, so... To get, like, actually, like, Kishimoto-produced content for OG Naruto, uh, it's going to be one-hour episodes every week, starting on this weekend, so pretty cool shit. Hopefully this leads to, I mean, I don't know what it's going to lead to, it's a bard, so the manga is doing well, finally. The anime is going to pretty much, I think the anime is going to be staggered in a sense that where they pretty much have mainly, it's not going to be exclusively out of magic, but mainly anime content. That's what they fucked up. They pretty much started at a point originally where the manga, they just had to run ahead of it pretty much in a sense. So they'd get to a certain point, filler, filler, filler. The filler was fucking bad. I mean, Sasuke fighting dinosaurs is objectively fucking bad. Uh, so, you know, we got to a certain point. It wasn't, didn't feel too good, you know, didn't feel too good. But I think if they can just stick to the actual core story, I think it's supposed to see... Um, One Piece chapter 1091. I have no fucking clue what One Piece's manga is doing at this point. I'm gonna be honest with you. I know in the anime, 
they just got to Gear 5 like two weeks ago. Uh, as I understand, I thought their anime was a weekly. So we should be getting a One Piece anime episode, I would imagine, this weekend. But I could be wrong about that. Um, as, I actually did see someone say that this is the first time that uh, Bleach, Naruto, and One Piece will be airing an episode in the same weekend in, like, I think eight years, something like that. So I don't know. I mean, I may be invalid, but... Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen second season Shibuya art. This is the... I'm going to have to get a little bit of sippy sip here. Let me uh, just do this real quick. I'm going to cut it out. Okay. Um, dude, the... I listen with headphones. You can tell, like, how bad my production or production process was before. Because, like, hearing myself, hearing all these, like, little bumps, hearing, like, my refrigerator go off, hearing, like, my... Not lacrosse, my bubbly can, like, hit the fucking desk... It's so weird. I see why people monitor their audio. I just was like, nah. I'm going to put the fucking punishment of hearing this shit on to the viewer. Um, <laughs> but Jujutsu Kaisen second season. Uh, this is probably... Like, if Bleach never came back... Jujutsu Kaisen would have been holding it down for all of Shonen these last couple of years. Like, Demon Slayer shit was cool. I wasn't, like... It, it wasn't good storytelling by any means. I'm not going to go into Demon Slayer and kind of... I could do a video of hate on Demon Slayer if y'all want a video like that. But uh, the problem with storytelling was just reductive as fuck and unnecessary. Redundant. Uh, just piss poor with the um, the Swordsmith Village art. But just what Kaizen do from the jump, bro. I, I've never understood why people don't like universally hold just a Kaizen over Demon Slayer. I mean... I understand that it's more cutesy. It fits what people have won out of anime the last, you know, 15 years or so. Kind of, uh, for whatever reason, very childish-looking uh, people, like kids, doing, like, part of the most, like, nefarious, evil bullshit universes. Um, Attack of Titan, uh, My Hero Academia, Mob Psycho. You know, I mean, these, like, cutesy characters have become, like, hard and fucking just... Uh, malcontents because of how the universe is and um, Jessica Kaisen isn't like that like these dudes are already assholes a little bit like, they're already hardened a little bit you know it's like each Dory out the gate granddad dies he's like fuck I'm about to go save the fucking world here eat a motherfucker's finger beat some niggas ass uh, Goro Satoru I mean we just seen Gojo not Goro uh, Gojo Satoru we just seen kind of Part of what, you know, goes into his very weird um, and sometimes unsettling psyche. I mean, if I had what happened to this dude, happened to me, um, you know, my god complex would be a little bit beaten up, honestly. Um, ghetto. Um, I mean, even like, um, God, what's her name? The fucking, the MILF. Not not MILF. Um, the third one out of the, no, Nobara. Nobar, I think her name is. Um, the, the ginger. I fucking love her character, dude. I really do. I know, like, I just forgot her fucking name. Like, I love her character. I think it's Nobara. Um, just, like, sadistic at points. Like, the kind of... The, the flip of the coin where she just becomes, like, this fucking hardened, grating, almost, like, anti-hero in how sadistic she is. I love that shit. Um, and, like, some of the extended cast, like, the panda dude was cool. Uh, yeah, like, you know, the class, I think it's class 1A, it's 1B. I may be thinking about, I think I actually am thinking about My Hero Academia, but it had, like, some kind of name distinction that's pretty similar. Um, and you had, like, the two sisters from, I think, the Xena clan fight each other. Um, and you had just everybody else. Pretty cool powers, I thought. Uh, they use curses pretty well. I like, guess, particularly, like, original stuff. And, I mean, I think, like, Limitless, um, the six eyes, the, all the shit that Gojo has in them, is probably, like, one of the more interesting like set of powers that we've had in quite a while um and i mean hearing it explained like in a um a swaya kage video was crazy i think it was swaya kage but like the way they like just dis distilled it so easily in the anime was pretty interesting i only had to replay it once to kind of get the premise of how it worked so that was cool um and just in general man this, this anime is fan fucking tastic dude uh, from top to bottom i need to rewatch season one one of these times that was kind of what this whole break was supposed to allow you to do is to rewatch season one. But, you know, I had to be a hard ass. But I'm going to rewatch season one at some point because season two, man, like, 
I thought season one was really freaking good. And season two is like improved on it in like every conceivable way. The animation is, I think it's a map of tier. I mean, I think, um, Ufo, wait, I always get this mistaken. I think it's Ufotable who does uh, Demon Slayer. I think Mappa does Jessica Kaisen. I think. We're, we're going to say that's the case. So, Ufotable has pretty much been... Fuck, I'm going to look it up. Uh, <laughs> no, I can't I can't go out like that. I always get the two mistaken, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was right. So, Ufotable, uh, Demon Slayer, Mappa, JJK... I think Mappa gets a lot of love for Attack on Titan. And I think it got some love for some uh, Jessica Cotton episodes. But, or, Deem, yeah, G G fucking Christ. Jessica Cotton episodes. But Ufotable, with how beautiful Demon Slayer is, like, no matter how bad it DS gets manga-wise, it's fucking gorgeous to look at. Um, Ufotable's got a lot of love for that, but Mappa has proved itself through and through with, with this fucking this arc i haven't got to watch every arc in 1080 but i did get to watch um i watched fushiguro's first fight with uh gojo in 1080 which i don't think you realize how big a drop or jump 1080 is from 720 like sometimes i don't because i'm like kind of sometimes reduced to watching 720 you know youtube or whatever but like it's fucking huge and that shit is gorgeous in 1080. I can't even imagine 4K, but 1080 is incredible. Um, I gotta cut myself off here to get to the next, the rest of this, but um, yeah, that's that's gonna be massively incredible. It's nice to have Itadori back. Uh, we haven't had Itadori back in three years now, three or four years, because he wasn't part of the movies. He wasn't the first half of this. It's been a good ass minute. Um, the TYBW episode. So, like I said, I won't go too much into Bleach TYBW. But um, basically, last thing we had, if you haven't watched, um, slight spoilers, I guess. But basically, Ichigo came back. And uh, because of the way Ichigo came back, uh, Iuha is able to go up to the Soul Palace. Um, so this arc pretty much will more than likely end with, as you can see, Yuha went, I don't think it's a spoiler to say Yuha went to the Soul Palace. And you can see it in this previous episode. Um... Yuha is going to have made it to the Soul Palace. I'm not going to say what happens at that point. But you can kind of imagine, like, Yuha pulls up to the Soul Palace. It's going to be some fighting, I mean, obviously. So I think that's pretty much going to be about where this arc ends at. If there's only about two episodes left, that's what I would expect. Um, the entire Soul Palace, like, part... I I've read the entire, entire manga, by the way. Um, probably will be about the majority, or at least half, I would think, of the third core... Maybe not the majority, but at least about, I think about half. Um, if it starts pretty much when he gets there with the um, the Royal Guard and Hashwal and Uryu, I would think at least four episodes, which these have been um, 13, I think, episode cores. So maybe about a fourth, fourth to a third, give or take. Uh, that feels about right because pretty much... I think they've ordered for 56 episodes, or maybe 54. Um, and what they've done, uh, I'm going to do this. Uh, let me let me just pause. Okay, so basically um, 52 episodes, so 13 a core, which that's why I had the 13 like number coming to my head. Um, and they, I think, are, are on episode 8 or 9 now for this core. So the thing to keep in mind is that the pacing has been pretty much about what it should be. Um, they have, from what I'm seeing on Reddit right now, they have 207 chapters in the TYBW art. So, you slice it up to about 52 episodes. You get to about four chapters per episode, which is pretty much what they've been on, give or take. But they've had some episodes where they've done more. And uh, they've had some episodes where they've just cut out stuff entirely. Um, so, pretty much the prevailing thought has been from the jump that they are intending on uh, smoothing out the back half of this arc because pretty much as this arc progressed um i would say even from the jump like there's definitely some moments that were kind of like um not particularly well explained or things that 
it's supposed to go in a different direction. Like, for example, um, it's very clear in the beginning of this arc that it's supposed to be more of a mystery who the Quincy's were. I don't know if it's supposed to be like a who done it type thing, but it clearly was not supposed to be something that was supposed to like be shown within pretty much the same, pretty much within the same episode in the anime. And when they're about like eight chapters of the manga, they pretty much knew it was Quincy's. Like he didn't do a really good job of revealing that or um, hiding that per se. Um, so you go from that to like kind of scanning the um, just just events. Like there's a lot of events where. I, as happens with these massive, you know, final arc things that you have, like massive villains against massive heroes that all have stakes built into them, and unfortunately, not all can be like very well thought out. Um, so we're probably gonna get some some stuff where, like, right now in this, like, literally happened in the anime, we have like sits um, Shinigami against, I believe, eight Stern Ritters. Um, they're probably not going to be thought out that well. And I'm not sure if all those fights end because we panned to the Royal Garden and all that stuff. And I'm not sure if all of those that were left behind are actually, like, particularly, uh, giving a fuck about. <laughs> so, um, it's going to be some things where, like, dudes get off screen or whatever. Because pretty much what needs to be saved, really, is the back half of this arc. And I mean, like... I was doing, like, discussing this in depth in, like, a bleach thread. Um, the last four major fights in this, like, made in terms of impact on the story, I guess, are, like, half-assed. I'm not going to say the fights, but... Um, I'll say that... Well, okay, so some of them, some of the characters involved in those fights have not been shown yet. So I want to kind of like liken. It's hard to really swap talk about, it, but basically, all of those fights in the manga more or less are like know you. And when I say know you, I mean kind of like with the um, the Maste Max masculine. I think it was his name, Maste masculine uh, fight. Where basically. You beat him down, he just massively powers up, and then he beats down the hero, and the hero gets stronger, we have more heroes, and then they beat him down, they beat him down, and then, you know, just that, that type of shit, back and forth, very, like, you know, petulant storytelling. Um, that's pretty much, like, every fight that this art concludes on, like, this entire, like, thing concludes on, um, except that it gets very rushed, because pretty much, so the, let's see, so we have a fight that concludes in Soul Palace, and then past that, or I, is it simultaneous? I think it's past that, no, it's some, I think it's, it's pretty close, um, there's a very massive fight with one of the Royal Guards, um, there is another massive fight of the Royal Guard, but it's not really massive. It's like like not big. It, it has very huge impact because it involves, um, you know, a very important plot point and then two massive characters. Um, but it's not a very like long fight. That is literally just a mirror match. Um, the fight with the aforementioned Royal Guard, it's a thing where he is very reminiscent to Master Masculine. Um, and the last fight is pretty much... <laughs> if, I, if I mention the character in the fight, you can kind of tell where it goes. I'm not going like, to mention the characters, but it's um, it's just a sort of similar thing. Where basically, there's no good, like, narratively speaking, no good fights that, call, that close this arc out. They're very cool when you have the scope of them factored in over, like, what they should be, the potential. But the actual fights fall very short. And the build-up to the fights, and kind of the conclusion to build-up to the fights, very short. Literally, these two fights that I'm thinking of, with, including the, um, the Quincy's, the two early ones, including the Quincy's I mentioned, those two fights end the same way because, basically what needs to happen for the third fight. Basically, plot detects or states that to get the third fight going, 
the other two fights must end, which is some of the cheapest shit. It literally plays out very cheaply, but you just think about that. The plot dictates these two fights need to end, so they just end without really any kind of decent ending to them. Yeah, that's kind of pretty shitty. But um, hopefully with the... Hopefully, like, episodes worth of time that they have cumulatively. They, I'm not saying they're going to do, like, completely anime-only episodes, but with roughly 30-plus minutes of free time to fuck around with, they can figure out a way to kind of smooth around some of these plot holes. I'm not expecting anything perfect by any means, but there's a lot. They need to do with a lot of characters. There's, like, even what we've gotten to this point, like, you can tell this massive characters have not been introduced in any capacity, really, in a while. Yorichi, um, Sosuke Aizen, uh, Kisuke Odhar, these all characters, like, are massive characters in this series that have not had any relevancy whatsoever so far. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying they will have relevance, I'm just saying, like, you, you expect any kind of closing massive art to bring back old people, and, I mean, f fuck, you know? Um, so finally, the hell arc with Bleach. Um, this is, this is some really good shit. This is some really good shit. I'm just saying that right now. Really good shit. Like, this is a one shot, um, that was created for, I believe, the manga 20 year anniversary. Maybe the anime, but I want to say the manga. Um, two years ago, as part like, they had a ton of projects and stuff like that. Um, Kubo put it out. I think it was put out, I think it was Shonen. I may be wrong about that, but I think it was put out in Shonen. Um, it might have been somewhere else because of how fucking, like, this is a very gnarly chapter. Like, I don't know what already it is over there in Japan. I guess, like, instead of Shonen, it goes in Siatsu, um, jump, but very gnarly shit. Um, and it's post everything in Bleach, like, TYBW. Um, and it's the first content he's ever released, like, post TYBW of Bleach. We've done, like, Burn the Witch, but, like, you know, um... It's good. I'm not going to, like, spoil anything about it. It's just, it's really good shit. And we've been thinking, because the way it ends, is like, pretty much setting up an entire, like, new arc. That's why it's called Hell Arc. I think the Hell One Shot. Um, but we haven't got anything about it since. So the hope is that pretty much if the anime succeeds, we'll probably get a continuation of the Hell Arc in some capacity. Um, there's not really a high chance that he did a one-shot that was open-ended. And he just intended on that fucking, like, just being the end-all, be-all. But that predates the anime is um, kind of unveiling and is continuation, obviously. So maybe it's all continua um, continuation, um, contingent on each other. So just um, kind of enjoy that. I believe it's about 70 pages, if I remember correctly. I actually have recorded a review to that shit, and I don't think I've ever posted it, so... I'm going to try to knock that out before Sunday, which I believe the 4th is on... Is that Sunday or... I think that's Monday. I'm going to try to knock that out and post it before then. So if you want to peep that, just keep an eye out this weekend. Should be coming out then. Um, but that's about it. That's my anime shit. Um, this went on longer than I thought it would. So what I'm going to do is just do one more of these. Like one more um, topic. And then... I'll figure out the second episode at some point. I don't know when it's going to come out. Probably next week, but you know, I'll figure it out. Um, so that's it for this section. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, so this right here is going to be... It's kind of short. I don't really have much to riff on here. I haven't given, I haven't given much. I've been trying to like refrain from opining too much social media because I'm like, I want to keep my thoughts in my head to post them on here. Um, so we've had a topic... And this is way different anime, obviously. Completely different. This, the jock bully spectrum or whatever. Uh, but we've had the NBA World Champions debate. Which is a debate that comes for American sports leagues all the time. Um, Patrice O'Neill had a pretty funny bit about... I think it was the NFL or something like that. Basically, it's Americans in general. Like, we'll call ourselves world champions. And that's why the fucking world hates us or something like that. So basically, that Patrice O'Neill bit... If you can go find, just look at Patrice O'Neill, Arrogant Americans, just go find that. Um, that's basically like what has borne out to life. Basically like a, a, a kind of supernatural um, level sprinter, Noah Lyles from America, 
basically uh, won some medals at the um, the Summer Olympics, I guess these are, the Summer Olympics. Some I don't know, some kind of shit like that. And um, in that, I guess he was like asked kind of like about Americans and uh, maybe the NBA or some specific, something like that specific. I watched a video, I just kind of didn't really le- uh, watch the build up to it. But basically his response to the, was like NBA heads shouldn't be called world champions. They don't have any flags out there. Um, it's just one league. I don't know how you call yourself world champions. There's nobody else participating. And they just kind of like segue that into saying like what we do is actually like a world champion. Um, and just immediately like that got like massive blowback by a lot of American players actually. Um, there were some, I think, Euro players that opined on, not Euro, but like overseas players. But for the most part, all tweets that I've seen have been like American players. So if you want to just kind of... Um, buck up some American pride and American nationalism, I guess just shit talk our sports. That's all you really need to do. <laughs> but I'd be like the Trey Youngs, um, the, uh, just everybody. I don't know why Trey Youngs the first one came to my head, but it's all these dudes. Um, Tyler Harrow. I mean, just the real, like, class A NBA players, right? Fucking, uh, who am I going to say next? George Hill? Anyway, um, <laughs> shout out to Indiana George Hill. Um, People have just been pissed about this, but like I the point is like I don't think the point itself is arguable. I think if you want to like kind of dance around the premise of like, well yeah, we don't have really anybody else from other leagues that like participate for this trophy, but we have the best of the best across the globe here. So we call them all the world champion. I mean, if you want to come out of like that, then yeah, I mean, you, yeah, that's true. But like the simple point of the fact of the matter is like, so the English Premier League, and this is, soccer has pretty much been like the, the rebuttal to the point I just mentioned pretty much. The English Premier League is pretty much the premier source of football in the entire world. It is like in the top five leagues, they're almost all European, and the top of that top five is the English Premier League. Uh, Europe is the top of soccer. Uh, and simply put, what happens in the Premier League, City, United, yada, 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 has pretty much been more or less the most competitive league in the world. Uh, but they are not the world champions. They are the Premier League champions, which this is all concept I haven't had to get explained to myself. I've gotten explained to myself like relatively recently in the last couple of years. Um, because you do have the Champions League, which includes some people from the Premier League or some teams, some clubs, but it's not exclusively the Premier League, if that makes sense. Like, you've had the PSGs, the Real Madrid's. Uh, I think pretty much anybody, I want to say, from Europe can participate in the Champions League. It's obviously, there's certain restraints that make it as certain teams, the top of their respective leagues make it, but because Europe is the top level of this sport, um, the top of Europe, more or less, is the world champion. I mean, I don't know if the Champions League is necessarily the winner of that is called the world champion, but more or less, the best of the best are playing in Europe. I mean, even if you want to go into guys from the countries that are not from Europe, Messi, Paymar, Pinaldo, um, all those dudes, uh, they're still, like, playing in, you know, up until money started talking. They were playing in Paris Saint-Germain, uh, United, you know, Juventus, you know, so forth and so forth. So, more or less, a Champions League would roughly be what a world champion would be like. And even then, I'm not sure they call it world champions. It's just like, I don't, it's just a false equivalency to say, like, because you have the top level talent from across the world, you are the world champions. You're still the NBA champions. You are a league that is constrained in of itself. Now, if we do get to a point, like, I know that I just read today, like, Dallas is trying to um, do an exhibition against, it's a very popular soccer club that also has a basketball team. I think it's, I think it's Real Madrid, I want to say. Um, I think. They're playing them, which, I mean, this stuff has been happening more often. Exhibitions in Mexico City, in Europe, uh, exhibitions against, like, other teams, you know, yada, 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 and so forth. I mean, soccer started coming to America more often, too. So it's 
it's a thing where we've had like the borders pretty much open for Western countries for like 60 years now. Um, and for whatever reason, I guess there's just now it's come to the point where like, okay, you guys also have basketball. We also have soccer. We can kind of try to make this work a little bit. Um, so I mean, it's cool. It's cool stuff. Like, I mean, I, I know that like realistically, like we're not expecting a ton of competition unless it's like generational prospects on these other teams, like uh Metropolis, Metropolitan, I think it was uh, 72 or 92, a uh, Wimby Amis team against the basically the G League United team. Um, it was competitive with Scoot played. Uh, the game, where I think Scoot went out, I think it was a little bit more of an ass kicking. But basically, outside of those type times, when you have like maybe, um, I don't know, let's say like, um, let's say Luca played for Real Madrid. He's from Slovenia, I think. Let's say he played for, I think, it's what, I think Madrid is a Spanish club. At that point, you have that game against the Jazz. Probably going to be, like, not very competitive, but it might be competitive. I mean, Luka played some competitive exhibitions against OKC's team. It's like a 16-year-old. So, uh, obviously, the NBA team won't be up for it the same way as the um, EuroLeague team. Uh, I know Auburn, for example, my my college, um, we played over against Israel and beat down, like, basically Israel, like, three levels of team set up for Auburn. Pretty much like the, I think, like, the, the younger dudes. I don't know what to call them, but the younger dudes. Um, they got the shit kicked out of them. They're pretty much, like, not as athletic. And you got, like, the Israel, pretty much, like, the B team to the national team. Um, they were physically a little bit closer, but they were just, like, not as athletic and not as, like, quick. Um, so it was, like, a 10-point game, 15-point game. And then they ended up playing the national team with Denny Avia and some other, like, former NBA players. And they kept it respectable. It's just Denny Avia is an NBA player, and he had, like, 40 points. Um, and our, like, best wing defender was sit sits Obviously, like, sits 9 uh, So it didn't work out very well. But uh, <laughs> it was a ten point, it was a eight point game, I believe. So you can have, like, fun cross-country matchups. Not every matchup is going to be, like, the 2018 Golden State, you know, Warriors against fucking the third-level uh, Israel team or whatever. Like, it's going to be some competitive matchups you can have. You just got to, like, kind of figure it out. And I mean, just the general like premise of should the NBA feel the way it does? I don't think so, but I do think the NBA is going to go in a way, slowly but surely, into a world where they can introduce other teams competitively. Pretty much to tell you, to be quite honest with you, the NBA wants to have hands in every single country. They've basically made a farmer league out of um, Africa. Um, they obviously like your league talents always come to the NBA if it's top level your league talent. Um, China, I mean, they try to have a good relationship with China as best they can. Uh, you know, guys play exhibitions over there in China sometimes. So I mean, the NBA is doing everything as can. It the NBA shut its fucking mouth about China when that shit was happening. Even when like dudes were sent over to China, playing in China, while like massive diplomatic um, mistakes were being made. And even, like, Daryl Morey was, like, basically threatening people's lives with his stupid shit he was saying about China. Um, <laughs> I fucking hate Daryl Morey. Um, and it was just, like, it's clear that the NBA is doing everything it can to survive in these, you know, and even thrive in these other countries. But this interesting tournament thing, um, I think either uh, Zach Lowe floated it to the primary, like, watcher of this idea, or he suggested it was something that I like, thought about, but basically, um, a premier, it's almost like Champions League in nature, where you have an in-season tournament that does not necessarily interrupt the actual season itself that's being played. It's just some teams are going to partake, partake in it, while some teams play normal-ass games. Um... I think it's going to be the ultimate evolution of that. They end up having like actual teams come over and play actual games in those in season tournaments. The problem to me is I like, I'm not going to go into this right now because it'll take forever. But like, I'm not sure how you involve these other teams in any kind of like meaningful way because like right now the problem is just trying to figure out a way to like make it a prize for the NBA players to partake in this. 
So I'm not sure you make it a thing where it's still a prize for them, but these other teams are coming over that are like actually like either going to like be very lackadaisical about it or going to be like basically fighting for fucking blood sport because they're getting paid to come over. It's massive amounts of exposure that a lot of teams, a lot of leagues have former NBA guys or former American dudes that never had exposure. If you talk to a lot of G League people, they think a difference between like them or like you know, the guys who made like a sign Whiteside, PJ, Gabe Vincent, it's just exposure. And they could be correct. So there's gonna be some team, like, you know, some top level, you know, had a kingdom team and just like tries to put a fucking can of whoop ass on let's say like the the one seed in the NBA that's just like coasting through this shit, trying to stay healthy. They're gonna try to beat the fuck out of those dudes. And it's gonna just be like another out of element of added element of like competitiveness that to be quite frank with you, many NBA athletes outside of like the actual playoffs do not have that level of competitiveness for the most part. Some that do even lose in situations, uh, but it tends to be that many NBA athletes, when they don't have to play hard, they don't play hard. Um, which I mean, I can't blame them because of what they have to go through from a you know, year-to-year uh, kind of grind. But the point being, I'm not sure the Premier League or Champions League thing gets executed the way that some people want it to, but... Either way, they're trying to be global, and um, we might get to a day where the NBA actually does sit down and look at itself and it's like, hey, we are immersed enough with other leagues where we can say you're a world champion, um, and obviously, whoever wins in the NBA is the best fucking team on planet Earth. I mean, even if it's the Miami Heat who wants other the, the instead of the Nuggets, think about it for a second. Jimmy Butler, Gabe Vincent, Mastros, a healthy hero, Oladipo maybe, um, Kyle Lowry. Those are all dudes that made it in the NBA, had massive moments in the NBA. Most of them hooped against the fucking Boston Celtics who had like an eight-man rotation of very good NBA players. Um, Tel Aviv is not competing against that, bro. I'm sorry to tell you. The Guangdong Sharks are not competing against that. To be quite frank with you, any prime NBA like player is going to drop 80 against these dudes. When they were hooping in the lockdown against like China and shit like that, like the not the lockdowns and like COVID, but like the um, the lockout, I guess from like 10 years ago now, they were the fucking like spectacles. J.R. Smith was like the best player in the fucking court in China or whatever the fuck. Like, it's just, it's not fair. It's not fair at all. And to have an entire roster of those dudes. Well, let me say, when I watched Denny Avi against Auburn, I was like, this is like Superman against a bunch of normal fucking people. That shit would be Thanos against fucking ants. (laughs) I'm sorry to put it. So I'm not disagreeing with the premise that NBA teams are way better than the rest of the field. Um, But simply put, they're not world champions because they simply don't play the rest of the world. All right, so we're going to close out here. I'm going to do some recommendations on our way out. I want it to be the outro segment of every episode. So I'm going to do some recommendations and we'll get out of here. Okay, so I'm going to keep this mainly music because I didn't watch many like TV or film or anything like that. It's going to be general recommendations for the most part. But uh, um, So just a couple of albums that I've been rocking with. Uh Voire Dyer, I know it's like French, but I don't know how to pronounce it. Voire Dyer, maybe, uh, by Rose Swisher and the Alchemist. Uh, people have thought this is going to be like their surprise album that supposedly existed on YouTube for years, um, and nobody could ever find it. I don't get an album exists. I think Alchemist is trolling people, but um, this is like I, 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 I can tell it's like this is not like from one year. I guess record over certain points of like you know recent memory um but this is probably something like the tightest production or cleanest production are always wrapped over in a while um some of the cleanest flows are always had in a while not that kind of like some rap songs feet of clay like slums slurring that he's done that some people don't like i personally love it but some people are not a fan of it um uh, i thought this is like one of his best albums in this discography honestly i enjoyed it quite a bit um dog storm by rs poppy this is still in my top 10 of, like, my entire year, my album of the year list. 
Um, I've tried to like, I had it pretty low. It's on the cutting block for a while. It's even moved up a little bit when I come back to it. It's just some like, Arnis Poppy is like a guy that kind of gets tossed up as like a meme rapper. But like his fucking flow and some of his bars, like he sticks to very common themes, obviously. But every once in a while, I mean, he just catch fucking lightning. I know you can say that about a lot of rappers, but this dude, when he's on, he's on. Um, this is why by Paramore. Uh, that's one that um, I, I think I gave like a couple like songs to listen to early in the year when it came out. Um, I, f- I fucked with Misery Business pretty heavy recently. I listened to the entire Riot album recently and Misery Business. I fucked with a lot. Um, the mashup with that and Good For You by uh, Olivia Rodrigo. Fucking incredible. I also got to show you how much Olivia bit from fucking uh, uh, Haley Williams and Barrymore. But uh, really good, like, kind of... It's supposed it's thought of on RYM as, like, a post-punk revival album. And it's cool seeing, like, somebody who, like, grew up making such, like... I mean, I think pop... The, like, the appeal of pop punk is, like, it's petulant, childish music. But, like, hearing somebody, like mature that much like I, I pretty much i'm listening to very few paramore albums out or songs outside of um uh, riot listen to a couple but not many i'm um, hearing like that maturation in a person who has had like decades of success now um it's cool it's cool she's you know she's grown um we have some other stuff i could mention but we'll just end it there that's three. actually i will say in the end it always does with the japanese house um touching yourself the song off of that I mean, it's a good album, but that song is one of my favorite songs of the entire year. Um, and we'll leave it there. That's four albums. Some people don't listen to four albums in a fucking year. So that's four new albums you listen to. Um, and again, In the End It Always Does by Japanese House. Um, this is Why by Paramore. Voir Dyer, only on, I think, it's some NFT site right now, but it'll be on streaming services in like three weeks from now. Um, or you could get it legally if you want to get it legally, but I'm not recommending that. Um, or and Dog Storm by R.S. Poppy. Three of those four on streaming services. I recommend all four as I listens. Um, I think all four are in my. This is why it's not in my top ten. But Voir Dyer, when I figure out my top ten and recalibrate it, will be in my top ten definitely. And uh, that might knock out one of these other two, but we'll have to see. Uh, I recommend college football this weekend if you are just like bullshitting, like not doing much this weekend. Definitely recommend college football. I will be recommending myself some time spent watching, um, like Starfield or whatever the fuck it is. Um, that new, like, shooter, exploratory type game, Massive Worlds, um, Starburst. Fuck it. I'll be watching that. Um, my homeboy's a big gamer, has been tweeting about it for a minute. Um, I just, I'm interested, you know, I'm trying to get back in the game in one day. I probably never will because I'm sitting there for about five years, but you got to keep the hope up or you can be fucking depressed for the rest of your life. I can't imagine a world where I give up on gaming completely. Hopefully that never happens. That's it for this episode. Um, 53 minutes, hopefully it'll be a little bit shorter next time, but I can't promise anything. Um, that is Biscuits from Heaven, YouTube channel, podcast name, Nugs from Heaven, and um, feel free Feel free to share it around. I'll be sharing it myself because I want motherfuckers to listen to me ramble by bullshit. But if you like hearing me ramble by bullshit, then feel free to share it. So, nugs from heaven. Uh, if you have any recommendations, if you have anything to, like send in, any questions, any shit like that, just comment below. I may set up like an email or some shit like that, maybe inbox, maybe do that. But um, peace. Enjoy your weekend.